PRP seat covers bring a whole new look and feel to the interior of your Ford Raptor. These seat covers are designed to perfectly fit over your stock seats, bringing a really tight and nice looking OEM fit and finish. Just like all of our seats, they are fully customizable with over 80 different colors and materials to choose from. So you can design the perfect look inside your Raptor. Depending on the year of your Raptor, PRP has front seat, rear bench, and center console covers that you can customize to all match. There are a few different cover designs depending on what year your Raptor is. Today, we're gonna to show you installation on a 2013 Raptor with most of the install steps are gonna be exactly the same and we'll point out a few differences when they come up. The first thing you wanna do when you get your seat covers is to take them out of the box, lay them out. If you can, lay them out in the sun and let them get warm. If the material is warm, it's gonna be a lot more flexible and it's gonna be a lot easier to put them and stretch them over your stock seats. We're gonna to start today with the front seat covers. First thing is to make sure you have both rights and both lefts, top and bottom. The easiest way to know this is you're gonna have this airbag pocket for the airbag to pop out, and that's always gonna go on the outside shoulder next to the door. So make sure you have the driver and passenger. Then on the bottom covers, you're gonna see it's kinda cut a little bit different on either side. This side right here, this extra flap, is gonna have this little slot right here we're gonna pull your seatbelt receiver through and that's always gonna go on the inside next to the center console. Step one, you're gonna remove both headrests. So pop it up like usual. And then there's a button on either side that you need to press both in and then to be able to pull it up all the way up and off. Next up, we're gonna slide it forward a little bit just so it's a little bit easier to access and get in here. We're gonna start off with the top cover. So make sure that you have the correct side with this airbag flap always being on the outside right here where the airbag is in the seat. Then undo the bottom, make sure it's all opened up. And then you're gonna take that seat cover, put it over the top and slide it down and over the seat. To get the edge down here, you just need to kind of push this material around the plastic behind it and get it flush so you can pull that seat cover all the way down. Next up, you're gonna see the two headrest slots up here and these two cutout holes for them. You're gonna push the material down on one side, kind of get it around one corner and then work your way around and get each corner so that cover sits underneath the plastic nice and flush. Next, you're gonna take this center flap here in the front and push it through the center of the seat to the back. Then go on the back side and grab that flap through the center of the seat and pull it through all the way. It is kind of hard a lot of times to pull it through, especially when it's really tight. So a trick you can do is use a pair of wide nose pliers, gently kind of grab the edge of it and use that to pull the cover through and it'll save your fingers a little bit as well. You just need to be careful that you don't pull too hard or don't damage the cover in any way when you use the pliers. Once you have that flap pulled through, make sure you go through and get it really tight, especially the pliers make it really easy to get a good grip on here. The tighter that you pull this flap in the back, the tighter the cover is gonna be on the front and the better it's gonna look overall. Once you have it tight and nice, you're gonna pull it up like this. Pull the other side of our cover and we have the hook and loop strips right on the front side right here that you're gonna connect it to. So usually start on one side, start to connect it, and then work your way down the line. And then once that's done, you can put this flap down. 
Once you have it all connected, go on the front, mess around, make sure everything is fitting nice, that it's tight. There's not a lot of movement or a lot of bubbles here in the front. And if you need to, go on the back and readjust it and tighten it up as needed. Last step you're gonna do on this top is you're gonna connect or kind of layer together our airbag pocket right here. So you're gonna see this mesh piece. You're gonna lay that underneath and kind of use your fingers to push it over the front of the seat underneath this front. And then just kind of use your fingers, just push it over, flatten it out along there, going from the top down to the bottom. Next up, we're gonna go with the bottom cover. First thing, make sure you just have the correct side bottom cover. If you look underneath this, there's gonna be a really wide side that's gonna go next to the center console and the thinner side right here that's gonna kinda tuck underneath and around where all these adjustable buttons are. So, take your cover, kinda put it over the front and kinda wrap everything around where it needs to go and start to put it into, into place. Next to the center console, you can see this little flap right here that you're gonna feed the seat belt through. Then kind of work the cover around, get it into place. This back flap, just like before, you're gonna push through the center of the seat. On the outside corner, you're gonna grab this little flap and kind of tuck it behind and underneath the plastic right here. And then kind of use that corner up front to kind of pull down and get this entire cover kind of underneath. The string right here, same thing, just kind of pull it underneath and then you're gonna tuck it back behind here and let it drop down the bottom. Okay. Then just kind of go around, use your fingers and your thumbs, and kind of push all that material behind the plastic. Then go on the back side, lift up the flap and you can continue to pull that center flap through. Just like before, use a pair of wide nose pliers and you can get a good grip and be able to pull extra tight on this flap. Just like before, you wanna pull this flap as tight as you can. The tighter you get it, the tighter the front seat cover is gonna be. Just make sure to go and check the front that you didn't overdo it. If you pull this too tight, it's gonna to start to pull the front of the seat cover off. So once you have that done, you're gonna grab the string kind of from this end, and we have a little flap right here that you're gonna kind of tuck in and underneath this cover just so it kind of goes around the corner right there. Grab that string and run it through two of these little loops that we have in the seat cover. On the outside, you're gonna grab that other side of the string that has the little loop in it and feed that one through one of the loops in the seat cover. Then take the end of the string, run it through that loop, and start to pull it tight. This is another area where it really helps to use those pliers so you can get a good grip and get this string as tight as you can. Also double check that the string's not running into anything on the sides. Make sure it's not getting stuck in the electric seat sliders and it's not eventually gonna rub or get stuck or get torn by something underneath the seat. Once you have it nice and tight, use those pliers and pinch off where the string goes through and then tie it off.
Then go back in the front, just make sure the cover's sitting on there nice, everything's kind of smooth. There's not a lot of wrinkles or things like that. There's not a lot of play in here. Um, best advice, just go around and just kind of push everything around, tuck everything down in the corners like that. And if you need to, go on the back again and re-tighten and readjust. One thing to know, especially if these covers have been in the box for a little while, it may take a little while for them to fully stretch out. You may have a couple little creases or wrinkles, especially if it was folded up in the box or a little bit of movement in here. Our best advice, put them on, get them tight, sit in them, drive in them for about four weeks, about a month. Let all the material kind of settle and stretch out as it's needed. And after a month, go back and re-tighten everything and that way you'll get a really good, nice tight fit. Then last step is to put the headrest cover on. Make sure it's going the right direction. Obviously the PRP logo goes in front or if you own these front headrests, hook and loop kind of goes towards the front like that. So open it up, get all three of these flaps kind of opened up and then gonna go on kind of one side, one corner and kind of pop it over the top. One tip or piece of advice, kind of use your thumbs and kind of push that foam down and that way you're able to get the cover around it. You need to work it around a little bit once you get it on and over the kind of bottom. Make sure the PRP logo is lined up nice and even. Kind of use your fingers and your thumbs and just move the material around as you need so it looks nice and even and straight. Then go on the bottom. You're gonna take this center flap, pull it through, take the loop and hook strips and connect them together. Then take these two, little two side flaps and do the same thing. Then just do a final look over, make any more adjustments you need, retighten the bottom if you need to. And once you're all set, reinstall the headrest. Just like before, you need to push down on both buttons to be able to get the headrest in. Next up, we're gonna start on the rear bench. As you can see, this double cab has a ton of leg room and a ton of space to work in here. This bench has a 60 section and a 40 section with three headrests. So when you pull your covers out of the box, just make sure that you have all seven pieces that you need. So we're gonna start by removing all three headrests. Just like the front seats, you need to pop them up and push in those two clips to be able to pull them all the way out. You can press this button on the side, flip the headrest down and get it out that way. We're gonna start with the bottom cover on the 40 side. So start by throwing the cover over the seat and you're gonna find right back here these two anchor rings. We have slots in our cover with these little locking flaps that go right over these anchor rings. Put them, make sure you get both of them get fed through. Then take the center flap and push it through the center of the seat to the back. It helps if you kind of lift up the seat to be able to get that flap all the way through. Once the flap is kind of fed through, this looks nice and kind of flush. You're gonna take these little flaps right here, push them underneath and up through that ring. Take off that felt strip. Then you're gonna take that flap, push it through the hole, and you're gonna connect that hook strip to the forward kind of carpet on the inside on there. That's basically gonna stop any crumbs. Then 
Then go around the front, pull that front cover over the front, get the corner over each side. And kind of pull and tuck it around. Pull up that protective strip. Then you're gonna start to connect all the hook and loop working around. Especially on this big bench, I feel it's best to kind of start in the center. Attach that one point, get it real tight, and then just kind of work your way around the side as you go, tightening and pulling each time to get the cover tight. Go down the bottom, find that strip and that flap that you push through the center. Take these protective felt strips off. So you have that hook exposed, and then you're gonna pull really tight and hook it to the bottom carpet on the seat. Kind of start on one side, pull and attach it as you go. Going on the front, everything's looking pretty good. You're gonna have a couple little elastic bands right here that if you pop up this seat belt, you're gonna to wanna to feed down around this corner and then attach. Then there's another flap in this corner that you're gonna to wanna to kinda of tuck almost kinda of underneath that plastic piece and around it, just so it gets a good angle and then attach to the carpet. Then do your final check. Just work your hands around, make sure the cover is fitting nice, it's nice and tight, doesn't have any major wrinkles or anything like that. And if you need to, undo the hook and loop strips underneath and retighten as needed. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the 60 section of the bench. Throw the cover over. You're gonna see these same two little flaps right here. We're gonna put the anchors through. Then push the flap through the center of the seat. and pull it through on the back side. And attach those two hook strips through the center of the ring. Push the flap through on the middle section. And pull it through on the bottom. Then you're gonna to start to connect all the hook and loop working around. Especially on this big bench, I feel it's best to kind of start in the center right here. Attach that one point, get it real tight, and then just kind of work your way around the side as you go, tightening and pulling each time to get the cover tight. Down on the outside corner, you're gonna have another little elastic band, which you're gonna pull over and down Try to get a good angle on it to kind of pull that back corner in. Same thing on this corner, you're gonna have two more elastic bands that you're gonna kind of pull over and attach to the carpet. Then this back little elastic band, you're gonna kind of run down just right around underneath where the seatbelt clip is. Bring it back here and kind of pull it down to the side. There's another little elastic band right here in the center by the seatbelt. You're just gonna pull that down and attach it to the felt right below. And then you can pull that seatbelt up and over it. Then you can come down here, pull the center flap through and attach it. Now 
I go back on the top side, I can see I got some weird kind of things popping up. Like this is still popping up a little bit over here. I probably pulled it a little bit too forward when I attached it on the front side. So I'm gonna go around and rearrange everything, kind of retighten everything, get the seat cover to sit a little bit better to where it needs. I can see like this kind of carpet line right here was pulled a little bit too far forward and needs to go back a little bit more for this to kind of sit down low and nice and retighten up all the hook and loop strips and make sure it looks nice and tight. Then you're gonna have a flap right here that comes off and you're gonna stuff through the hole where the seatbelt goes and attach it underneath down here to the carpet. Next up, we're gonna start on the top sections of the bench. As you might know, it's actually not that easy to unclip or pull off this top section of the bench. The rear bench is really easy, kind of pops up and folds by itself. But behind this seat on either corner back here, there is a little clip that latches in to the back wall of the cab. It's really hard to get with your fingers. So what we've done to make it easy is include a wire in with your kit that you can bend around in a little loop like this. You're gonna take it and pop it underneath and try to find that latch and pop it up. This is what the latch looks like on the backside. This little pin right here is what you need to wrap around and pull up to be able to release this latch mechanism. So the easiest way to do this is to lift the bottom seat up. It kind of pops this back seat forward. And if you use a flashlight, you can just barely get in here and get a visual on it. And then use that wire with a looped end and pull that release lever. Then once you get it released, drop it down and the bench is free. Then grab your top cover and pull the seatbelt out and you're gonna kind of stuff the cover underneath the seatbelt so it sits flush, goes all the way through it. And then kind of take the corners, wrap them around the top of the seat. Just like in the front seats, you're gonna take these holes for the headrest slots, push them on through on one corner and get them to sit flush underneath the plastic. Take this bottom flap and push it through the center of the seat. and then pull it through on the back side. Kind of pull the cover around, make sure you get all the bottom corners. Then you're gonna take your two string ends on either side and start to feed them through the loops here in the back. The end with the loop, you wanna bring through about three loops till it sits about in the center of the seat where the seat belt is. Then bring the loose end through and meet it in the middle. Pull this drawstring tight, and just like before, use pliers to get a really good grip and a really strong pull. Then you're gonna use those pliers to lock it in place and tie it off in a knot. Once you've got it tied off, you're gonna take this loose end string, run it up to the seat right here, and connect it around this string up here that's kind of popping up right now. And then you're gonna pull it down tight, 
and it's going to depress the center section, make it sit nice and flush and flat. Run it down here again and tie it off on another knot, making a nice little triangle. Then just take your excess string and tuck it underneath so it's out of the way. Once you've done that, go back in the front. You can see the corners are still kind of weird, kind of need, needs to be pulled around a little bit and messed around. Kind of needs to be moved around a bit. On the corners right here by the pivot point, we have hook and loop strips that you're gonna pull around this corner and tuck up against the suede on the stock seat. Remove that protective fleece layer and then pull it tight around the corner and attach it to the suede. You may need to reattach it and move it around a little bit a couple times to get it to sit nice. So once you have everything most pretty much attached, go around, make sure everything's fitting nice. Make sure there's nothing crooked or weird. If you kind of look, both these lines are kind of crooked. They're not straight horizontal like they should be. They're both kind of angled up right here. Probably means I pulled a little bit too tight on this string on the backside in the top section, and it kind of pulled this whole thing up and made these lines end up kind of crooked. So just like that, if you find any issues, go around. I'm gonna go in and reattach that on the back and loosen it up a little bit so it's not making these lines crooked and do any small fixes like that that you need to. Once you got the cover completely on and you're happy with it, you can click this latch back in. If you notice, most of the time it doesn't seem like it's going in. This bar adjusts and slides up and down. You just need to mess with it a little bit, find the spot where it clicks in nicely. Then do the exact same steps on the 40 section of the bench. Then, same thing as before, pop it back up. You still got some random wrinkles and it's kind of bunched up over here. Move everything around like you need, get it into place and retighten the drawstring on the back if you need to. And like we said before, it may take a little while for the seat cover to actually open up and fully smooth out, especially if it has some crease lines from it being in the box. So the best advice, put it on, get it as tight as you can, get it in place the best you can. Drive it for about a month. The more you sit in it and kind of move it around and the more time the cover has to expand and kind of form to the seat, then after a month, go back, retighten everything up and it should look super good. And then last step is to put on the headrest covers. Just make sure you grab the headrest with the circle cutout for the button on the correct side with logos always going in front and patches in the rear. Once you get the headrest on, just like the headrest buttons on the seats, kind of work your way, get the cover underneath on one side, and then work it around so the cover sits flush underneath that button. Look at the headrest, make sure everything's nice, fit, even, level. Everything looks good on there. You can move it around if you need to, if it's kind of sitting weird or offset a little bit. Then, go on the bottom. You're gonna have these long hook and loop strips on either side that you're gonna connect together in the center. And then these three 
hook flaps right here. You're gonna pull off that protective sleeve. I usually like to do the center one first, get it connected, and then do the side ones. Final check, tuck everything in you need to, make it look nice and pretty. And then when you put them back into the seat, just make sure that that button always goes on the outside so it's easiest to access. Same thing on the center headrest, just a really small headrest. If you look, the flaps with the hook are gonna go in the back and the loop strip is gonna go in the front. I found it easiest if you start just on one side or one corner and then literally pop it over the side on the other corner. Then just kind of twist the material, get it so it's sitting flush and nice and even. Then same thing, connect that center hook and loop strip. Then the two side ones. Just like before, you gotta push down on both buttons at the same time to get it to slide all the way in.